Now for our dinosaur of the day, Brachiosaurus. Brachiosaurus is a sauropod that lived in the Jurassic in North America. It was described by Elmer S. Riggs in 1903 based on fossils found in the Colorado River. The type species is Brachiosaurus altothorax, and Riggs said it was, quote, the largest known dinosaur. Of course, that was in 1903. Brachiosaurus means arm lizard, and it was named so because the length of its arms was unusual for a sauropod. And the name altothorax means deep breastplate because it had a deep, wide chest cavity. The holotype is based on a right humerus, right femur, right ilium, right coracoid, sacrum, trunk, and two caudal or tail vertebrae, as well as some ribs. The type species is also based on a partial postcranial skeleton. The fossils were collected in 1900, though it wasn't named until 1903. Riggs and his team from the Field Columbia Museum, now the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago, went to the area after Riggs sent inquiries about fossil finds in 1899 to rural areas. S.M. Bradbury, a dentist who was also an amateur fossil collector, responded to his inquiry. The type species of Brachiosaurus was not the first Brachiosaurus bones found, but it was the first attributed to the species. There was a skull found in 1883 in Colorado sent to Charles Marsh, who used it in his restoration of his Brontosaurus slash Apatosaurus. In the 1970s, Jack McIntosh and David Berman decided the skull was more like a Camarasaurus, but in 1998, Kenneth Carpenter and Virginia Tidwell analyzed it and found it to be somewhat in between a Camarasaurus and a Giraffa Titan, which was considered to be a type of Brachiosaurus, but we'll get into that in a little bit. It's not assigned to a species, but the skull is now classified as Brachiosaurus. Brachiosaurus skull was loosely attached to its skeleton, like other sauropods, so after it died, it would have been easy to detach either via predators or erosion which might explain this mix-up in the skull for Brachiosaurus versus Camarasaurus and, of course, the Potosaurus and Brontosaurus with Charles Marsh. The type species bones of Brachiosaurus went on display at the Field Museum in 1908, but there was only 20% of the skeleton, so it wasn't mounted. In 1993, the bones were molded and cast, and missing parts were filled in based on giraffe titan fossils. It was mounted in 1994 in the Field Museum until 1999 when it was moved to the United Airlines Terminal 1 in O'Hare International Airport so that the museum could have room to display the T-Rex Sioux. The same year, the museum mounted a second cast of Brachiosaurus outside the museum, and only the humerus and two dorsals are real and on display in the museum now. The type specimen of Brachiosaurus is the most complete one found so far, which isn't very complete. And because it's one of the earliest known dinosaurs, the family and the genus has had some reclassifications. Until 2009, Giraffa Titan was considered to be a Brachiosaurus. But Giraffa Titan is different from Brachiosaurus because it had different trunk vertebrae. Ole Shevecki made Giraffa Titan its own genus, and in 2009, Michael Taylor published a study on the differences and found 26 distinct bone-based characters, which is more than the difference between Diplodocus and Barosaurus. And Brachiosaurus had a 23% longer trunk vertebrae series and 20-25% to longer body and taller tail than Giraffa Titan. Another kind of confusion with Brachiosaurus is there was a shoulder blade assigned to Brachiosaurus that used to be considered part of the species Ultrasaurus, and we go over that in more detail in episode 20. In 1969, paleontologist Kingham reassigned Brachiosaurus to the genus Astrogen, but not many people accepted that. Brachiosaurus fossils have been found in Colorado, Oklahoma, Utah, and Wyoming. It's a pretty rare sauropod of the Morrison Formation. The Morrison Formation was semi-arid with dry and wet seasons and flat floodplains. It had river-lining forests, otherwise there were no trees, and the forest consisted of conifers, tree ferns, and more. Other sauropods in the area included Apatosaurus, Barosaurus, Camarasaurus, Diplodocus. But again, Brachiosaurus was rare in the area. John Foster found 12 specimens of Brachiosaurus versus 112 Apatosaurus, 179 Camarasaurus, and 98 Diplodocus specimens. In 2012, a juvenile sauropod postcranial skeleton was found in the Morrison Formation in Wyoming, which was probably a Brachiosaurus. And because only incomplete specimens of Brachiosaurus have been found, a lot of estimates of how it looked are based on Giraffa Titan, since they are pretty similar. Michael Taylor analyzed Giraffa Titan and Brachiosaurus in 2009 and estimated Brachiosaurus was about 82 feet or 25 meters long. It may have weighed as much as 35 metric tons, though lots of size estimates are based on Giraffa Titan, which again was a formerly Brachiosaurus. The species was Brachiosaurus bronchi, and now it is Giraffa Titan bronchi. And again, Giraffa Titan, there are much more complete specimens. There was a 
2014 study in PLOS Biology that estimated Brachiosaurus weighed as much as 62 tons, or 56 metric tons. Brachiosaurus had large air sacs in the neck and trunk to keep it lighter. It had a very long neck, small skull, and large body, like most sauropods. Unlike other sauropods, its forelimbs were longer than its hind limbs, and its tail was shorter compared to its neck. It was up to 40 to 50 feet, or 12 to 16 meters tall, and it was very giraffe-shaped. Unlike how it's depicted in Jurassic Park, Brachiosaurus could not actually rear up on its hind limbs. Heinrich Mallison found that, though other sauropods could do that, Brachiosaurus had too long of front limbs and would not have been stable, and also it didn't matter because it could already reach plants at such a tall height compared to other sauropods, so it would have no need to have reared up. Its neck was probably not very mobile, but it would have pointed upwards naturally. It was considered by some to be a high browser, eating vegetation that was 30 feet or 9 meters off the ground, and it may have also eaten lower vegetation, 10 to 16 feet or 3 to 5 meters above the ground. According to Wilkinson and Ruxton in 2011, Brachiosaurus, with its long neck, may have saved some time and energy by low browsing for food. This is because it reduces the overall energy spent foraging by 80% compared with dinosaurs with shorter necks. Brachiosaurs probably ate ginkgos, conifers, tree ferns, and large cycads. It ate in an up-and-down motion of its jaws with its teeth shearing plant matter when they closed. A 2008 study in the Royal Society said Brachiosaurus may have swallowed its food whole. Its teeth could strip plants but not break up the large chunks of vegetation. But it would take soft tissue analysis to know for sure if Brachiosaurus was definitely a high browser or a low browser. However, one benefit, if it was a high browser, would mean it didn't have to compete for food with other herbivores. Brachiosaurus had spoon-shaped teeth, 52 teeth, 26 on top and 26 on bottom. It ate 440 to 880 pounds, or 200 to 400 kilograms of food every day, though more recent estimates put it at 260 pounds, or 120 kilograms per day. It probably traveled in herds and migrated for food, and Brachiosaurus probably also liked flatland because it would have been a lot of energy to climb up hills, and also if it was uh, climbing hills, it was likely it would have fallen. Brachiosaurus probably walked on its toes, it's called a digitigrade stance, like dogs and cats, compared to plantigrade, which is like humans, where we use the heels and toes to touch the ground when walking. Brachiosaurus had a claw on the first toe of each front foot and claws on the first three toes of its rear feet. Each foot had five toes. It was probably warm-blooded like other sauropods, and the large nasal arch may have helped cool its brain. Before the air sacs were known about and Brachiosaurus was thought to weigh a lot more, scientists thought it could not have possibly been warm-blooded. Scientists used to think that because Brachiosaurus was so large it had high body temperatures, but in 2011 they were able to calculate its temperature to be 100.8 degrees Fahrenheit or 38.2 degrees Celsius based on ratios of some isotopes in Brachiosaurus teeth so it probably kept cool with a lower metabolism as an adult. Lowering its body temperature and slowing down its metabolism meant that Brachiosaurus would not have had to spend as much time eating. Brachiosaurus had large hearts and high blood pressure to pump blood up its neck to its brain, because its heads were held up so high, so its blood pressure was possibly 400 millimeters of mercury, which is three to four times higher than a human's. Scientists used to think Brachiosaurus lived in the water because its nostrils were at the top of its head, but Brachiosaurus had air-filled pockets in its body, so it would have been too buoyant in water, according to a 2004 study in the journal Biology Letters. It had an arch of bone over the snout and in front of the eyes. The nostrils were thought to be an enlarged bump in front of its eyes, because they used to think the nostrils were at the top of its head, but in 2001, Lawrence Wittmer analyzed muscle attachment scars on dinosaurs in present-day animal skulls and found that Brachiosaurus nostrils were actually near the tip of its snout. The crest that scientists used to think was the nose on top of its head now may be a resonating chamber to amplify sounds that it made. Brachiosaurus may have had a good sense of smell. The adults probably had no predators, since the largest predators at the time were Allosaurus, Ceratosaurus, and Torvosaurus, which were half its size. Plus, Brachiosaurus had a long tail it could whip at predators. They may have lived as long as 100 years, and they had a leathery skin. Brachiosaurus eggs have been found in a linear pattern, so probably laid eggs when walking, and most likely didn't take care of their young. Brachiosaurus has appeared in Jurassic Park and Walking with Dinosaurs, and a model from Jurassic Park was used in the 1997 special edition of Star Wars Episode IV, A New Hope. The Rontos from Tatooine were based on Brachiosaurus from Jurassic Park. Also in 1991, GX-7, a main belt asteroid, was named 9954 Brachiosaurus. 
Brachiosaurus is in the family Brachiosauridae, and they're found in North America and Africa and Asia. Brachiosaurids were quadrupedal with longer forelimbs than hind limbs. They probably went extinct in the early Cretaceous, though there's some evidence some may have lived in the late Cretaceous. There's a lot of debate over which animals are in this family. Former Brachiosaurus include Lucititan and Giraffatitan, but other Brachiosaurids include Astrodon, Deinodocus, Pelorosaurus, and Ultrasaurus, though many of these are considered dubious. Another Brachiosaurid is Europsaurus holgeri, a dwarf sauropod only 20 feet long that lived on an island off the coast of Germany, and yet another Brachiosaurid may be an Asian dinosaur called Chiawanlong.